much we can say at this moment. The planet Venus is a very hot planet. The atmosphere is dense, and its primary constituent is carbon dioxide. There are many mysteries yet remaining about the planet Venus. These mysteries will be solved by further analysis of our present data, and hopefully by more experiments of this type in the future. NASA, the National Aeronautics and Space Administration, presents Aeronautics and Space Report. Next month, NASA plans to launch an unmanned Mariner spacecraft to the planet Venus. We know very little about Venus because we cannot see through its thick clouds. The 540-pound Mariner will attempt to shed light on the origin and nature of the planet and its environment, giving us additional knowledge about our solar system. Ever since the first people were gazing up at the skies, they had to have noticed Venus. It's so incredibly bright. In the ancient records of the Mayans, the Greeks, the Chinese, people all over the world were seeing Venus up there, naming it and writing all sorts of stories about it. But we could say that the first modern observations of Venus began with the use of a telescope in 1610. Galileo in the early 1600s turned his telescope on to Venus and he looked at the phases of Venus and that really refuted the geocentric model that was in play and commonly accepted. Galileo's observations were one of the first uh, clear examples of how observing another world could tell you about your own. For the next 300 years Venus continued to be an obvious target for telescopes. These early observations eventually revealed that Venus had a thick, dense atmosphere. This discovery would define our image of the planet. Rather than seeing it as a meandering bright star, Venus was now our mysterious sister planet. Early in the 20th century, we were making huge advances in science in all kinds of different fields. With the advances, we started getting observations of Venus using spectroscopy and using ultraviolet wavelengths. The astronomers of the time were making fairly reasonable assumptions that the atmosphere on Venus is very similar to the one on Earth, and that the clouds that they were observing were made up of water vapor and subsequently they concluded that the Venetian atmosphere was really wet and stormy and the surface was swampy. And a lot of astronomers at the time even concluded that it was really good conditions for life. There's never been anything like this before in fact or fiction. First spaceship on Venus. NASA's Mariner spacecraft, after traveling four months and 217 million miles, began fulfilling its mission as it rendezvoused with the planet Venus. By 1967, we actually had two successful missions make it to Venus. The first one was the Soviet Venera 4, and nearly a month later it was followed up by the NASA's Mariner 5. The interesting thing about that, that we were in the middle of the Cold War, and despite that, the Soviet and American scientists were working together, cooperated, shared the data, and the picture that the scientists got of Venus was much more inhospitable than they really imagined. By 1967, if there were any doubts about whether Venus was livable or not, those doubts were washed away. Now in an unexplored region of space, Mariner was placed on its Mercury intercept course by the gravity of Venus, the initial target on this first dual planet mission. 
Mariner 10 took more than 3,500 pictures during its rendezvous with Venus in February. For the first time, after a decade of exploration, Mariner 10 was carrying cameras. We had ultraviolet cameras. We could actually make some of the most beautiful images. I mean, here we have Venus, the goddess of love and beauty, and we had yet to really make a close-up picture of her. Pioneer Venus was the last NASA mission to go to Venus to study specifically its atmosphere in detail and the dynamics of that atmosphere. That was 30 years ago that we sent it there. It took a lot of detailed uh, data that allowed us to test the theories that we had about why Venus was such a strange environment. And one of the most interesting, of course, is this idea of the runaway greenhouse effect as an explanation for why is Venus so super hot. So while the Pioneer Venus orbiter was sending a steady stream of data back to Earth, the Soviet program undertook several more, actually eight missions, back to Venus. And the highlight of this set of missions was the near 13 and 14, which made it to the surface of Venus, and while they were active there for 45 minutes, they took a handful of color panoramas of the Venetian surface. Now that they have been reprocessed, they present a stunning view of the Venus surface. And forgetting the heat, toxic atmosphere, and the pressure, it really looks tranquil. Venus, the brightest star in the evening sky, has captured our imaginations for centuries. Since August of 1990, though, a spacecraft named Magellan has peered beneath this veil of mystery to show us the surface of Venus in unsurpassed detail. Magellan was a pretty simple and elegant mission. It had one basic uh, purpose, and that was to get a detailed, high-resolution map of the surface topography of the entire planet. And what we saw was, was an enormous surprise, a very young surface, lots of volcanic features. There were lava plains and volcanoes and all kinds of features. It was an unexpected and, and marvelous revelation of what was underneath those clouds. At this point, the American and Soviet space missions are really museum pieces. And while everybody is now excited about the new data and the new pictures, images that we're getting from Mars, Venus is really staying in the shadow right now. But throughout the history, Venus has provided us a lot of wonderful and interesting theories and answers to the questions that we have here on Earth and which shone the light on our space in the universe. But new players are coming into the game, and with the European Space Agency sending a spacecraft there in 2006, and the Japanese Space Agency planning one in 2010, the Venus exploration is going to pick up, and it really seems that a very good opportunity to go back because there are lots of things that we still don't know. And with nearly two decades passed from the last U.S. mission to Venus, isn't it time we go back?